I'm a filmmaker. For the last few years, I've worked in Africa and Congo with photojournalist Jan Josef Stock. We've covered good news stories and bad. One day, he told me a story from 50 years ago. A story of failure. A story about a man who came to Congo with a dream of liberation. It got under my skin. It answered some of the questions I had about Congo. I couldn't shake the feeling that some part of this story lived on. And I started to wonder, maybe this story hasn't ended. That's Jan Josef, we're in Goma Charcoal Market. He's the guy who took all the photos you've just seen. Yeah, I know. You thought the photos were mine. I wish. And the other member of our team is Turn von der Heiden. You'll meet him a little bit later. Please listen carefully. In 1965, as countries across Africa threw off the shackles of colonialism, Congo became a hotspot of the Cold War. The Cuban government, led by Fidel Castro, took a momentous decision. They would support the anti-imperialist and liberation movements blossoming across the world. They would train and supply guerrilla fighters and communist rebels. The heart of the storm was Africa. The Western powers and corporations sucking the continent dry would be defeated. The socialist revolution would be remade. And the people would have a new champion. Che Guevara. We went to Cuba to do some investigations about Che Guevara when he was in the Congo. We met some of the comrades who went with Che in Congo who are still alive. We even met his second in command, Mr. Victor Dreger. Our idea is to get as much information as needed from this journey to follow in the footsteps of Che Guevara and do the exact trip as those men did 50 years ago and find out if the spirit of Che Guevara is still alive in Africa. The problem is that in 1965, when we took the decision to support the Congo Liberation Movement with a petition of Del, de los guerrilleros congoles y tuvimos la oportunidad de acompañar al Che cuando salió clandestinamente de Cuba. Hicimos un gran recorrido de, de, de Dar es Salaam a Kigoma, son muchos los kilómetros, más de dos días de recorrido por medio de la selva hasta Kigoma. Y en Kigoma eh, embarcamos para el Congo. So, as a dutiful son, Che wrote a letter to his mother. He shaved off his trademark facial hair that's him on the left in disguise as a businessman. And he travelled secretly to Congo, hunted by the CIA, where it all went terribly wrong. Y ahí me plantearon la, ne la necesidad, o que deseaban que yo fuera a África, donde estaba el Che, que ya él se encontraba allí, que tenía una guerrilla grande, y que estaban luchando por la liberación de del Congo belga en aquel momento. Aquí la impresión y la información que nosotros llevábamos es que la guerrilla tenía éxito. Y en realidad, inmediatamente que nosotros llegamos, nos informamos. Todo parecía indicar que no era tan real. Él trató de convertirse en un Congo más. Aceptar la comida, aceptar sus costumbres, no tener nada por encima de los soldados congoleses. Todo lo que se repartía para los cubanos, so we listened to the stories of Drek and Oscar Fernandez. We learned about the route they took, the villages they stayed in, and the hardships endured. Our research trip was a success. So we drifted about Havana, trying to pick up the trail of Che. But all we could see was another kind of failed revolution. A vibrant society locked out from the wider world. And then we met more comrades of Che, who fought with him in Congo. They shared their memories and anecdotes. Photos of then and now, back then again, without the beard. I know, it's confusing. This is Maniola. He talks now of Cuba sending peaceful emissaries to Congo. Doctors, nurses and engineers, all inspired by the spirit of Che Guevara. I was struck by their analysis of Congo in 1965. It was so close to the country I know today, still mired in instability and rebellion. Big multinational corporates digging up the minerals to go in our iPhones and laptops. Now I'm no revolutionary, in fact I'm a pacifist, but I realised that Che wasn't just an icon to dopeheads, radicals and t-shirt makers the world over. 
His hard work, integrity, his passion for social justice was very much alive amongst his comrades. Che's Congo mission was a disaster, but even today, on its 50th anniversary, the struggle for Congo's vast mineral wealth continues. And then we saw a letter from 1965, the envelope it came in. A medal, another medal, lots of medals. Che's camera, his watch, yep, it's a Rolex, and his razor, Ooh, that's gonna hurt. And finally, we found the park commemorating revolutionary heroes, many of them people you'd never want to meet. Patrice Lumumba, socialist hero of Congolese independence, murdered in a US-sponsored plot. Laurent Kabila, the revolutionary leader who Che met in 1965. He craftily outlasted his enemies to lead a Rwandan-backed rebellion, becoming president of Congo in 1997 until he was assassinated in 2001 by one of his bodyguards, passing the presidency like a family heirloom to his son, the current president, Joseph Kabila. This is the end of a trip and the beginning of a journey. Later on, we will go to the Congo and follow in the footstep of Che Guevara all the places where he went, starting from Dar es Salaam and crossing all the way through lakes to the border to Congo, go to the different villages where he spent time, where they tried to start a revolution. So I hope you follow us and uh, journey to find the spirit of change.